Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Swim and Thunder, I'm LT. Forgive me for my voice this week, I am a little bit under the weather and I'm a little bit late on this video already due to a lot of behind the scenes issues. It's been quite the season for Art Fight this year. I had a bit of a slowdown in week 3 to avoid burnout before creating more art in week 4. But without further ado, let's finish out this event with these wonderful time lapses. Edith caught my eye in week 1 when I scrolled through the Discord server and had to click on a user named Scolding Hot Soup. When I saw Edith, I wanted to draw them then and there, but I didn't have the proper picture in mind to draw him the way I really had wanted to. So it was great to start off week 3 with this wonderful inspiration of bubbles and water. This is actually my first time in like 4 years to do an actual digital painting without having a sketch. And it was actually really nice and calming. I just went with the flow, setting down the tonal colors, and deciding to have such a warm toned face amidst the neutral tones of blue. I looked up different facial references to come up with an idea of how the shapes and shading of the face works together. I believe this piece took me about 5 hours to complete, and well, it's just shortened to a couple of minutes here. I wanted to provide a sense of realism to the face because, well, what caught me with Edith was not just his design, but it was probably one of my first times seeing a half Vietnamese character that wasn't my own. And being half Vietnamese myself, I dove in for the representation. The colors are all much darker and moodier, purposefully a bit more muddled to provide this sense of calm around a storm. From Edith's backstory, it seemed like they went through a lot and I wanted to give this little dash of self-care and relaxation. But sometimes, even in a moment of peace, there is still the chaos swirling inside of us. The stiffness in the lips and the eyebrows, the shoulders, all of it comes together to give hints toward not really being used to serenity. I like the thought of the bubbles providing not only framing, but a sense of mental fog trying to bring forward a sense of peace and feeling of love for oneself. Which I decided the roses may bring that sense of self-love and enforce that message. Can you tell I put a little bit more heart into this piece? Starting this video strong today. Viola, or Viola. Usually I hear it's Viola. From Mary in Darkness 99. What a cool design, which I began a train window drawing at the very start of week 3 and got frustrated at my drawing. There are rare times, like this drawing, when I feel as though I had regressed several years in my art journey in just one piece. It leaves me frozen and dumbfounded, so much so I can't even begin to realize what it is I am unhappy with. So I put this drawing away, debating on just not drawing Viola. Looking back, I realize it is just the placement of well, everything. The facial structure is off, the body anatomy doesn't sit right, and the entire scene is wonky. But you know I wouldn't be talking about this if I didn't give it another go. In my second attempt, I became real with myself. My candle wick of energy was burning out by this point, so I watched a buttload of art videos about composition, character art, framing, all kinds of topics. I waited until my inner creativity was reawakened, and I decided to go for yet another new style. One I felt might fit better for the character I thought of drawing. Making them feel slightly more transparent like a ghost with virtually no line art. I placed the little stars in a triangle form and used the hat and jawline to form a sort of angle to really center in on the face. I still feel pretty brilliant for my framing technique in this one. I did some simple shading techniques to finish it up and here we go. Viola, voila! Small shout out to Cac Sib for answering my call for characters to include in this video. I decided to draw Draca or Draca because, well, I looked at all the realistic looking chickens and worried I may have to skip since, well, I don't really draw avians, especially not realistically. But then I saw Draca and even though I do not draw realistic dinosaurs, I figured I would still give it a shot and this was my best attempt. I also realized I got the eye wrong initially, but I fixed it later. The feathers were hard because how do you even draw feathers? I threw on some greenery, lighting, and bim bam boom, there you go. I made a mass attack of bards, and I don't have too long to really comment on each drawing individually, so I will say my favorite thing about each character. Bree by Loot Loot. I love their soft fey druid energy, super peaceful design that feels a lot more unique concept of druid. Carlisle from A Friend of Smiling Rocket, which I don't have the information for them, so I will just include Smiling Rocket. Oh my goodness, Bard Cat, yes. The little hat details are amazing.
Finn from Dusty Mermaid. I love the seashells and the decoration along the face, such an ethereal and or ethereal and otherworldly energy, but I always love otherworldly creatures. Gotta love mermaid bards too. Beautiful. Roost from Aloth, a tiefling opera bard. Oh my goodness, I love the concept of an opera bard. It feels so perfectly dramatic, and the horns and the mask, everything is mwah, amazing. Bastion from Funfetti it reminds me of my own scamming NPC, Chad Chaddington, the scam wizard. Except Bastion has a heart, and for that, we love Bastion. Love the hair combo as well, very cool. Zezrina from Cypress Tree, or Kypress Tree. I am not trying to play favorites, but, well, I love the third eye motif, which matches with the prophetic visions and the entire concept of a ghost whispering, future seeing bard is so perfectly edgy and amazing. I love it. And finally, my own changeling bard son, Pig. He is so wholesome, and I want to draw him in this somewhat more feminine form. My son, I love him so. Jade Monroe, a swimwear model from Sentinel Kinjo. Shout out to Sentinel Kinjo, by the way, for also submitting their character for me to draw. I really appreciate that. I feel like I did not do Jade justice in this drawing, so I won't promise anything, but maybe expect me to redraw you a better picture of Jade in the future. Just maybe. But sweet and pretty sunset for a sweet and pretty gal. By this point, I decided that this would be my last art fight attack of this year, but ran out of ideas. So for Rose Shine from Primex Vera, I decided to roll a dice on a few tables of art prompts and got roses, creme brulee, and then promptly ignored the other three tables I rolled on. Do I remember what tables? No, it was two in the morning like most of these drawings. I really like the soft design of Rose Shine and felt the warmer colors fit the creme brulee, which I spent so long on, so I'm gonna skip ahead. Rose Shine is such a beautiful character, and I took my time on the rose just on her ear. The whole drawing has this vibe of softness that I really love. Unfortunately, the halftone details I used is way more obvious in video than in the drawing. Oops. But, say la vie. I am really proud of this drawing. And now, with art fight over- wait, there's more? Alright, this is a nice and simple headshot of Crime from Alias. Shout out to Alias, by the way, a wonderful individual and supporter of the channel. I initially wanted to draw their idiot trio, I think it's called, of Crime, Ghost, and Medium, which I only just realized the theme of these names, but I realized I did not have enough time, and I was running low on creative energy. So I settled for now on drawing crime. I had fun with this, adding a little ghost in the background inspired by some painting of similar appearing ghosts. I cannot find it now, which gave me some worse than usual insomnia the previous night. I gave some nice line variation that I felt I hadn't given enough love in the previous few pieces and went with a similar painting or shading style as I did for the bards, since I really liked it on my sketches and wanted to see how it interacted with the bold line art here. I didn't really care for it and the eyes should probably have been smaller, but nonetheless, I think the overall piece looks pretty good. I decided to add some softer red rim light for some cool contrast against the dark background, but this is such a cool piece. Story time! It was late at night, I wanted something to draw, and I opened the art fight server and wanted to look at the cool characters other people have. But then, from the blue, I saw a user, Mize Sin, I believe it's pronounced, requesting art for not just their character, but their romantic partners. It was only four days from the end of art fight, but polyamory rep was not something I made often. Aster Hesperia from My Sin, Dakota from Liquid Rage, and Selena Iara from Always Tea Time. Okay, but these three are like 
so cute. After having a difficult idea of having them all in a battle together, I restarted and came in with this drawing of them sitting in a field having a picnic. Each of their character designs are slightly more complex than I am used to, which was an absolutely fun challenge for me to do. I worked a lot on editing anatomy like Aster's hand. I actually used the posing app again for Selena's pose. As for Dakota, I went based on how I felt about anatomy, which if you look too long feels wrong, so just focus on the whole picture together. I feel like each pose does somewhat capture each character's personality to a degree, at least I hope so. It was different for me to draw in clothes and hair without a sketch, and I had a fun time with the braids because I almost never draw braids. Before laying down their colors, I decided I would make the background first to set the mood of the piece with a pink sunset sky over the fields of violets. This helped a lot when it came to the context of the colors for when I do the shading. This drawing took me way longer than I expected, mostly because of the tactics I decided to use, but I was surprised to find out it had only taken me a couple days to finish this art piece, considering I worked day and night on it. Laying down the shading was somewhat easy. I just put on some simple hard shading and some pink lighting. It was nice and calming for me to work on this piece, and in the end, I am very proud with how it turned out. And with that, that ends Art Fight 2023. With Art Fight 2023 now concluded, and the last art pieces submitted in, here we have a compilation of the pieces from this year. Like last year, I feel like I have improved and gotten to experiment a lot this month, mixing and matching techniques to see what works and what doesn't. It's been quite a month, beginning with one owner and ending with three. It's been quite the journey too, and I want to take a second to give appreciation to the staff for working so hard to bring us all together in this wonderful event year after year, and this year was wonderful, and I'm already looking forward to next year. As we're at the end of this video, on the side here is just a list of thank you credits to everyone who has attacked my characters this year, and a big thank you to my dearest art friends who support me and are just wonderful people in general. I wouldn't be where I am without y'all's support, and hopefully, as future months come in, things will continue to grow and improve. Thank you to everyone who watched these art fight videos and waited patiently for this one. If you enjoyed these videos, please leave a like and comment what kind of art you want to see next from me. Maybe you'll see me in a couple weeks, or maybe next year. Either way, if you want to keep up with me, make sure to subscribe. I'm Swim and Thunder, and I'll catch you on the flip side.